action on the uh, straight ankle lock, not the cross ankle lock, which I, I talked about in, in the last video. And again, the most important thing is that I'm not trying to plantar flex the foot and drive pressure through the top of the ankle. I'm trying to invert the ankle like a toe hold, okay? Um, and whenever I teach uh, uh, beginners the straight ankle or they're trying to troubleshoot their straight ankle, I tell them that there's four or five steps where they should be able to get a tap, okay? And um, it all comes down to setting the grip correctly and ensuring that everything I'm going to do is to create that rotation in the ankle. I'm not trying to do this, I'm trying to do this. Okay, so if we come into, say, standard Ashigarami here, okay, and I have uh, a Chris leg, um, I want to create that rotation, so I'm going to start with my uh, spine slightly, uh, slightly flexed, my shoulder protracted and internally rotated, and I'm going to bring the sharp of my wrist right up onto the juncture of his Achilles tendon here, right up here. And immediately he feels this is something that he, he has to worry about, okay? And the first step here for me is that I'm going to retract and externally rotate my shoulder. And you'll notice that he, he gets the first tap there. That's my first stage. That's where I expect that I'll get my first tap. The second stage for me now is to walk this elbow behind my body. This usually takes me two or three straps. One, two, three. And he taps right there as well, okay? From here, I'm going to use my hand for base. I'm going to put my shoulder not down here because that actually takes the rotation off the foot. I'm going to come bringing my elbow closer to his hips, my shoulder where his elbow is. There, okay? Once my, my body is down, if he hasn't tapped yet, which most people do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to form a very special grip here. I'm going to cut my, my hand. I'm going to bring my elbows to my shoulder. I'm oh, sorry, my elbows to my ribs. And I'm going to drive both my shoulders back and push my, my grip to my shoulder. Okay? So, review, slide, first tap, second tap, third tap, and now grip, fourth tap. And that was real quick. Once my, once my hands are engaged, it's really, really quick. Now, I would only do this in rolling, well, I would never do this in rolling. I would only do this in competition if the guy hadn't tapped, and I was, uh, uh, you know, if I felt like I needed to injure him, which hopefully I won't have to do. Um, so again, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to try to create that rotation in his foot. So I'm not just going to bridge and try to look at him, even though that will get a tap. What I'm gonna to try to do is extend my spine, and look over my shoulder, and I'm actually going to try to look down towards the floor. I'm going to loosen up a lot here so you, that we, we actually get some range of motion on this. So, drop direction, okay? And that was five taps, well, four taps before I engaged my hips. In drilling, I always aim to be able to get the first tap. In rolling, I usually get it on about the second position. It's really hard in live rolling if it's favorite suspending for me to get that every single time. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But once I start creating that rotation, it gets really tight really, really quickly. Mm. Okay? So that's my, uh, the main goal in the straight ankle lock is always the inversion of the ankle. Now about the leg position, I'm using uh, standard single leg X here, and this is a perfectly fine uh, position to finish it, um, provided I can control the position reasonably well. It's not necessarily my favorite. Um, a really nice position is uh, the kind of Michael Musumichi butterfly ashi. Uh, very, uh, very strong pressure against his hips here. Very hard for him to, to break away all my frames. If he were to, uh, if we were single leg X here, if he were to clear my ankle, I would actually kick him over. I don't want him to be able to sit on this foot. I would come in, and normally what I do here is I like to come over the knee. And the reason I like to come over the knee is because at this stage he thinks he can run away. A lot of people think now they're, and it comes on very, very tight here. 
because to finish a straight ankle lock, I don't actually need control of his hip. I only need uh, to control that knee there, and that is a very, very tight straight ankle. And again, I'm not even getting to my shoulder uh, to finish there. So that would be my, uh, my way of thinking about the straight ankle lock. Five stages in the grip where I should be finishing and uh, follow the entanglement. So we might start from the single X. If he's defending, he's uh, doing whatever he wants to do. Maybe I kick him over and I go butterfly ashy. Maybe I go uh, the knee out butterfly. Or perhaps he cle clears here and I decide to build base. I'm up and I was trying to hold on a little bit loose so I wouldn't hurt Faker, but um, I can do the same thing, looking away. And it's actually really, really hard for him to move here because his hip is pinned right to the floor. I have base, and I'm not looking at him. I'm looking over here. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Faker. I'm going to 